record. Let's make sure we record. All right, let's start over. All right. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that, you know, this is a year of transformation. And for those of you who are joining us, I want you to understand what BYOB is all about, right? I really want you all to understand this movement is about empowering you, okay? This movement is about financially educating, impacting, empowering. And so I want to make sure tonight that you all understand that in its totality, all right? So you're here to develop a skill set. You're here to develop a mindset shift. You're here to create that woke generation that you are looking to obtain. And so I want to make sure that you guys really understand the magnitude of what we're speaking. You know, it is so it's going to take a mindset shift because you can get caught by shiny thing. You can get caught up by shiny thing, shiny thing. And I'm going to tell you all the time and I'm going to say it again. We're not here to provide you gas money. We're here. This movement is about your lifestyle shift. This movement is about you. This movement is about you learning a skill set. And so that's why we're here. And that's why we do what we do. All right. So now you're going to be empowered. Okay. Which means that you're going to learn how to take these trades for yourself. You're going to learn how to analyze it. And so what I want to do tonight is because we're talking about focus, we're talking about this power. That's why I keep dropping it in the chat as you guys log on. So we're talking about focus and we're talking about the power of your focus and we're talking about you understanding. And so I'm going to give you guys the same challenge I gave last month. All right. So, yes, there's another young lady that I do need to get your T-shirt out to you. I will definitely reach out to you after this. But, you know, I'm gonna always take time for a testimony. So I definitely see the growth in this account. I see the growth and the transformation in this. And so I just want to salute you as well. Um, you know, and, and so I definitely. So I, I just want to celebrate all of you all who are here and who are making that shift and that transition. We want to celebrate with you. That's what we want to do. So now um, as we dive in tonight, when I talk about your focus, this is what I want you all to focus on this month. I'm going to give you something to focus on. Okay. Cause we pull tools. We do all of this. Now, if you, if you like the HFX, we will definitely, um, we'll definitely come back and readdress that next week. You know, because all of you all have different trading styles. But tonight, what I want to do is I want you to be able to begin to know how to take the trades for yourself. You know, you detailed this week and needed to refocus. And that's good that you can identify that. And so you you got in here and, and I'm going to I'm going to walk you good evening, Alaska. I'm going to walk you through this to where. I want to make sure I'm going to tell you what I want you to do. And so, cause I want to give you got it. So, because now you can try however you want to and what you want, but I want to do this from the perspective of an empowerment standpoint. Okay. So what we're going to do tonight is I'm going to walk you through the BYOB cash out strategy, right? We're going to walk you through the strategy. Want to make sure you understand. I'm going to take some time with it because we did not have a call on Tuesday. So once again, you guys have prime time with Dr. B. As I was traveling, I was listening. It was a phenomenal call. You know, definitely a phenomenal call. Very empowering, very uplifting, very, I mean, just straightforward. So now, but today we want to make sure. So I'm going to walk you through the strategy. Want to make sure you understand it. But I also have the harmonic scanner up. And I really believe that as we implore and, and, and implement the tools, I like how these two merge together. Now, first things first is the harmonic scanner is not a standalone tool, all right? I want you guys to understand that. The harmonic scanner is not a standalone tool. Very important for you to understand that. So you should not be on a harmonic scanner attempting to take trades by itself, okay? You should not be on a harmonic scanner trying to mark it up, you know, and do it from that end. So definitely not something that you should do. So um, definitely want to make sure that you guys understand that. And so as you understand that, 
And as we understand that the harmonic scanner is not a standalone tool, then what you're going to understand is, and, and what it's going to do is as we come back to the vibrata and you start seeing the trades from the vibrata or the alerts from the vibrata, it's really going to help bring clarity to this, okay? It's going to help bring clarity. Now, what I want to do is we're going to come over here. I actually don't want the one already marked up. So you guys, so you might get some trades coming through here. So let's just come here. I want to walk you through the strategy because I don't want to unmark my charts, but I want to make sure that you all understand this, okay? Because when you log on, this is what you see, right? You see these alerts coming through. We just trigger for a buy. So hopefully we can get through everything tonight because I really want to just dive in and really grab you understanding. This is what the chart looks like when you log in. I know in the mornings when we get on the profit calls, you might see where I have it already marked up some or I'm walking you through it and you might see this, but this is what you see when you log on. And so it's like, how do I go from here to here? Like, how do I, let me bring this over here. How do I go from here to here? How do I know when to enter my trade? How do I know and how do I understand, you know, when to dive in? How do I take this and implement it? And so what we want to do is we're in April, new month, right? You guys know I like focuses. And so that means that we're doing this this month. That means we're turning up in May, okay? So now what this is, is, you know, as we're looking at this, okay? So here we have GBP USD. So this is what you see first. And so what I'm going to explain to you is the foundation, where the strategy begins, where we start from understanding that right so understanding that this is where it begins so i don't care you know like we have many different tools that you utilize within the company so whether you're using the swipe trades whether you're using the delorean whether you use it i don't care the bounce back whatever it is that you're using and pulling it back over here to analyze it this is where you start you have to grasp this and understand this in order to get started okay so there are two things, right? So one of obviously is going to be the strategy. Then of course, then it's the support and resistance, right? It is the support and resistance, okay? So obviously it's there. And then of course, obviously understand the skill set, which is market structure. But what I do believe, because it's already marked up, right? You see, we have it, it's marked up. You see it, but I want you to also understand that we don't blind trade this okay you don't ever blind trade anything so i want you to get out of blindly doing anything i want you guys to get into a habit of you know just really grasp this habit of analyzing and developing this relationship that you want and have with the market so our foundation like i said i'm gonna walk you through the be wild be cash out strategy because i want you to grasp the this okay so Ah, thank you so much. You are so very welcome. So now, here we are on this 15-minute chart. Foundation. So just think about it. We're like, right now, my daughter's learning math, counting money, different things that they're doing. So before, and they're, they're actually, I mean, if you look at what they're doing in the first grade, they're actually adding together like three digits and three different numbers. And, and then today in language arts, they're learning how to write paragraphs and breaking it down to the facts. Like, you know, you want a fact and you have to stay on topic. And why am I saying this to you right now? Because how you do one thing is how you do everything. And so they're organizing their structure and they're breaking it down to where they have to, they're building a foundation. They don't just ex have an expectation for them to jump out, to dive out and be able to write a, a, a paper. She cannot write a paper until she understands how to structure her paragraphs. She can't add three digits in multiple numbers until she understands one plus one, right? So it had everything you do has a foundation. And so our foundation is the 15 minute chart. So remove it from your mindset that we have a scale. It's not a scalping strategy. Remove it from your mindset that you don't need to develop past that. You want to eliminate all of that. It is a foundation. 
And so at the foundation, you must understand the basics. But I can't trade on the hour and the four hour if I don't grasp the foundation. So let's understand and let's grasp our foundation. All right. Now, here we go. Three indicators. Blue line cross over the red and an upward momentum around the 20 or blue line cross over the red around the 80. This is my stochastic. It is a momentum indicator, all right? This is my stochastic. It is a momentum indicator. And so knowing that I have a momentum indicator, then what I'm looking for is I'm looking for that upward momentum. I'm looking for that downward momentum. You see how we're going up, we're coming down. We're going up, we're coming down. We're going up, right? So, and so this is what it's going to do. And this is what it's going to continuously do. All right. And so this is my leading indicator. It's a leading indicator. So obviously that me leading means front. It means I'm guiding you. It means I'm taking you somewhere, right? Leading, leading, leading. Lagging means it follows behind. So my children are often lagging behind me. Think about we're walking somewhere. How many times you be like, would y'all come on? Would you come on? Would you catch up? Would you hurry up? They're lagging, right? So, but they're not going to, if I go somewhere, they need to follow me. So they don't get to just, you know, my six-year-old doesn't just get to go off and do her own thing and go off in another direction. If I go to the left, she need to come to the left. If she doesn't come to the left, then she's out of order. So we're not in confluence, right? We're not in, we're not in alignment. And so that's where you really like, that's why I'm telling you, I want to take the compartmental, compartmentalization out of your mindset. And I want you to understand that how this works is how we do everything. So now here we have our stochastic blue line cross over the red and an upward momentum. I have a green candle with a flat bottom and then I have a piece of flip to the bottom, okay? So now these are Hikanashi candles, Hikanashi candles, okay? They're trend candles. I can actually switch to my Japanese candles and you can see the difference in what they're doing, right? You see all the back and forth, the conversation, what's going on? I don't need all that. I'm a bottom line up front kind of person. Like what, just tell me the bottom line and what, what, are, what are we doing? Are we in a, are ultimately the buyer's in control or the seller's in control? What is going on? And that's what the Hikanashi candles give me. All right. Yes, I do have taught on the candles. Yes, I, I understand the Japanese candles. Yes, I know how to read the Japanese candles. Yes, I know how the Japanese candles move. However, I like Hikanashi candles. Hikanashi candles are straight to the point. They do the interpretation for you. So you don't have to, is this an engulfing? Is this a, you know, harami? Is this a, you know, what is this candle? Or, you know, um, so that's, you can, you know, is, is this a doji? Like, what is it? So the Hikanashi candles, they just translate all of that for you. And they tell you, guess what? I'm going to buy, I'm going to sell. You know, we're buying or we're selling. Now, what you do want to make sure is you have that flat bottom candle, okay? So this is going to eliminate your, well, do I need to wait until the candle close? Do I need to wait? Look at these candles over here, okay? I'm answering your question for you before you ask it because somebody always asks that question. So now look at these candles. Look at all of these little jagged, like the wicks that point out the top and the bottom. If I'm selling, you'll have some wicks here. If I'm buying, you'll have some wicks on the bottom. Those are the ones we don't touch. So in, in really in translation, those are the candles that we don't touch. Like those are the ones that we want to stay away from from our entry point because those are the ones like if I'm waiting on that candle, if I'm waiting on that candle to close, if I'm like all of the things that you do with the Japanese candles, those are those candles, right? The candles that are wicking out, those are those candles. So we're waiting. So my leading right here, leading. And then obviously you see I have a green candle with a flat bottom. And then that piece are flip, foundation, 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 be wild, be cash out strategy. So now what I want to do is I want to do time frame confluence. Remember, I just gave you the analogy of my daughter cannot make a decision. She doesn't control anything. Well, guess what? This 15 minute chart is my six year old. The five minute chart is my granddaughter. That's that's the that's the three year old. Right. So 
15 minute chart, five minute chart, 15 minute chart, five, what do they control? Absolutely nothing, but they're quite busy. You see all their activity. You probably hear them on the call sometimes in the morning. You probably heard my granddaughter this morning, right? They're always into something. They're always doing something. So that in itself is the lower time frame, but the higher time frames is what's going to direct me and give me the, the movement. Like that's the direction. And so that's why I need to check my time frame confluence. So what is happening with my confluence? Well, guess what? Right here, I don't have confluence. So that means that my lower time frame is attempting to do something that's just not quite there on my higher time frame. Can it happen sometimes on my higher time frame first? Absolutely. Absolutely it can. I mean, on my lower time frame first, you'll see that change and, and that shift happening. Absolutely. However, right? However, we make no decisions from there. We make absolutely no decisions from that space, all right? Because it, what if it's not? What if it flips around? What if it turns around? What if it changes? So many different things can transpire. So many different things can happen. You want to have a trading plan, you know, that, okay, I'm waiting till my trades are in alignment. I'm waiting until it's set up. I'm waiting until that, right? So I'm getting there. But in this one, absolutely no. So, and the question is, is for my GBP pairs, can we check the 30? Absolutely you can, but it's going to depend. It, it has to be telling me something. And this is where I think you all, you know, kind of mix it up or something like that. It has to be telling you something. If it's not telling me something, then if it's not giving me some sort of indication, if it's not giving me some sort of guidance, if it's not giving me something, right? If it's not giving me that, then I cannot do that, okay? And you wanna make sure it's giving you something. Like you wanna make sure it's telling you that it's okay. Is it giving you a sign? And no, you asked the question, but I was getting to that. So I just went ahead and answered it now. And so, because trust me, if you asked it, somebody else is wondering it and it gets asked all the time. So just kind of, you know, that's why it, I get it all the time. And so now, you know, what we're looking at, right? And what you're seeing is, you know, let's, let's see here. Let's come back over here. Um, what if it's showing it's an uptrend and a piece of on the top? Do we wait? Now, I'm, this, my confluence, I'm not waiting on the setup. It has to look like it's going, it has to look like. So I'm not waiting on the setup, but right here, what is important right here is my stochastic. Right now, my stochastic still in the cell. Look at this. So don't look at what happened after the fact. Look at where we are. And right now, my stochastic is still in the cell. So my momentum, my leading indicator is still in the cell, as well as, right, my leading indicator, as well as my um, candles are still selling. Now, this is the time frame confluence. So I'm not taking that trade right there. However, as I look at this, I can see why did I, didn't I just tell you support and resistance? I want you to begin to understand that support and resistance. That's important because as I look at my support and resistance right here, you can see that we have a support and resistance line. So you can see that as this was moving down, now you see how I'm beginning to mark up the chart. You see how I'm beginning to load up the chart. You see how I'm beginning to add onto the chart, right? You see how I'm beginning that? Well, as I'm beginning to do that, right? As I'm beginning to do that, you can kind of see that you, you need to like, this is what I say, you start from a naked chart, right? You start from a naked chart, it had none of this stuff on here. So we know who we are, we know we don't have confluence, but this is where you begin to train your eyes. So we already know that we have to wait for the confluence, but how do I know if I should wait? Like, how do I know that I should wait? You know, that's what I'm getting at. How do I know that I believe that it should start turning around for me? Like, how do I know that? Well, it's really quite simple because once again, I'm starting to get a support and, you know, I'm starting to bounce off of there. If I look at these candles, look at how these candles, right? If I'm looking at those candles, look at how these candles are now beginning to reject off of this area. So if they're beginning to reject off of this area, now you can see where we are in the market is another rejection. So it was it was in that downward trend. It was moving down. It was moving down. It's moving down. And now we're getting rejected. Why are we not going past this point? 
right? Oh, you said it makes so much sense now. That's why I wanted to kind of do this this way because I want you guys to begin, I want blinders removed. I want you guys to start seeing it to be able to implement the tools. The tools are wonderful, but if I don't know how to use them, like, right? You get a screwdriver, you can build stuff with it. But if I don't know how to use a screwdriver, do I need a Phillips or do I need a flathead? Like, this is what I'm getting at. How you do one thing is how you do everything. I need to know how to utilize my tools in order for them to be effective. So this is why I'm like, I want you guys to focus on effectiveness, growth, and proficiency this month. Like, this is really where I want you all at. And so as I'm looking at this, okay, and I'm seeing this, you know, I'm bouncing off of there. So as I come here, all right, now, if I look at my big picture, my higher time frame, I scoot over a little bit, I look left, I'm rejecting here as well. So basically, I'm identifying that I'm on a support line. I'm on a support line where I'm getting rejected. So my time, my trade might not be ready right now. I might not have confluence right now, and this is why some of you guys will test the waters and it'll work sometimes and it won't work sometimes. But what I want you all to do is operate in the mindset and operate in the skill set of your trading plan, which is if I don't have the confluence, I don't take the trade. I don't just jump in a trade. I want proper entry points, right? So this is what we're looking at, okay? And so we know that obviously that trade is not ready till about right here. Let me come up here on this higher time frame, move this over a little bit. So now you see when I when I was training you all back a while back, and I'm like, you can start your confluence from the hour. You can check your confluence first and drop down and analyze here. Because, you know, and if you didn't grasp that, we'll talk about it later. So um so now you say it definitely gives you more clarity. Your blinders are off. Fantastic. So here, blue line cross over the red and an upward momentum. Green candle with a flat bottom piece star flip. So now you can see this is where we are. And this one would have been your entry, not the one previously. And there's a five minute. Well, actually, the five minute, we have to wait on that correction to finish too, right? Because we need my five minutes to also be in that box. Now, to go back to that question where I was asked about you know, the 30 minute, um, going back down to the 30 minute. First thing first, blue line cross over the red. I was in, there was nothing telling me that I could buy, not until this next hour candle. Where were we even at on that 15 minute? This was 45. Technically we had 15 more minutes to wait guys. It was like 15 minutes, but you know, there was nothing, you know, there was nothing saying that I could take that buy. There was absolutely nothing here saying that I can move forward. There was nothing there saying that in this one, I'm trying to line up right here. There was nothing here saying that I could take that buy. And so if there's nothing there, my stochastic is in a cell, my got red candles, I'm not dropping down to the 30, right? My higher time frames give me direction. Now, if there was something there, like let's say my stochastic had already started, or let's say my candle was significantly pulled back. I mean, just uh, give me something. If it gives you something, then you can use the 30 minute. There's not a automatically use a 30 minute because it's GBP. Hopefully that brings some clarity. So let's go ahead now and let's go on over here because I want to talk about this, okay? So when you come to the harmonic scanner and you grab one of these, all right? I don't really don't care what broker you use. Like, you know, these are different brokers that um, they're using to scan the markets, right? Don't really care because you're not, you know, you're, you're just not analyzing on this. And trust me, I've seen it. I've seen people trying to analyze on here and I can, I can promise you one thing, the effectiveness is not there the way that it should be, right? The effectiveness is just not there. So you do not take shortcuts. Do not try to circumvent the system. Do not take the shortcuts, okay? I want you all to operate in excellence in everything that you do. And so we don't take shortcuts because we want wealth. And if you take a shortcut along your journey, are you really gonna get there? And I'm gonna leave it at that. So now, now when you're coming here, why do I always pick the hour? Well, let me break it down for you. The higher time frame gives me my direction. So yes, in here, there are gonna be harmonic patterns. Like, so 
let's look at this for just a moment. Let me let me help you with this. So this had been in the downward momentum. I want one. So let's come back over here. This was in the upper momentum. This was in a downward, right? Upward trend, downward trend right there. So if I come over here, okay, and you see that this is in an upward trend, right? But right here, this little section, impulse, correction, continuation, correction, continuation. Impulse, correction, continuation, correction, right? So that's that. So we know that here, I'm in a buy, all right? So let me get a arrow. Here, I know that I'm buying, right? I know that. But here, I have this downward momentum for a sell, right? So I see that, I know that, okay? That's where I'm at. So knowing that I'm there, knowing that um, I'm looking at this, okay? When I drop down to the 15, there's going to be uh, some patterns in here. There are going to be triggers from here. There are going to be patterns, harmonic patterns in here, right? There are going to be different things. I can't, I'm not saying this is just one right now. I'm just trying to give you an understanding that there's going to be patterns in there. But I'm buying. But look at this, like, look at how much this is, right? Look at how much it is. That's 50 pips. So this would have worked out. So when you come back over here to the harmonic scanner, if you pull from the 15 minute chart, do once again, can my 15 minute chart give me direction? So if this is not one that is, if it's not one that's pulling and is giving me this movement and that buy, then what I'm doing is counter trend trade. And so that's why some of these you'll see that on this lower time frame you'll come through here and you'll see some of them will hit their take profit and some of them won't. Because look at this. I mean, it's clear. Like if I look at this one, I'm in a cell, right? It's clear that I'm in this cell. But yet it's a harmonic pattern that's identified and it's telling me to take a buy. Is this a, I'm trading a correction. So this is why you never see me pull it from here. Because from an educational standpoint, for me giving you this from an educator standpoint, I need you to understand that. I need you to grasp that. And if I put that up and then it only hit take profit one and you and then you come out and you stop out, but you don't know why. And so 15 minute chart just does not give me clear direction in the market. 10 pips and cash out. So first support and resistance line. That's where you should be at until you understand more market structure. So and obviously you build from there. So that's why you always see me pull from the hour. Now, as you develop your trade plan and your foundational understanding of what we're discussing, then fantastic. Make that shift. Make that change, right? Fantastic. Trade the 15 minute. It's there. It's an option. It's available. But don't do it without understanding, right? Do not use the tools without knowing how to use them. So make sure you understand how to use them. So now you know why I'm always pulling from the hour, okay? And, and so why I teach from the hour, why I pull from the hour, the hour is going to give me more direction, right? The hour is going to give me like more clarity and understanding. And I'm trying to see the one that actually, because GPUSD hadn't finished, right? So you can see, let me also break this down to you. So da, da, da. I'm looking for, yeah, this so it's on here. So now another reason why we need to take it back. So as I'm looking at this, okay, and I'm seeing this, the ones up here are newer, all right? The ones up here are newer. So up here, this is a newer trade. So they identify a harmonic pattern. Now, let me ask you guys a question. Every time we put the harmonic patterns on there, do they always play out? Yes or no? It's real simple. It's not a trick question, I promise. Okay, there we go. They do not always play out. So. When you look back on here, are they there? What happened to them? Where do they go? They go away, right? So it's not a trick, it's space. I can't keep every harmonic pattern that every currency pair picks, I cannot keep them on here. So the only ones that are gonna stay on here are the ones that are playing out, right? Those are the ones that are gonna stay on here are the ones like this one played out. So, but obviously you see it started playing out, you know, it just hasn't fallen off yet. So when you drop down and you pull down to the bottom ones, 
they've pretty much already played out. And so it just depends on how much market activity it is. So right now we see that the older ones, like this one actually pulled, right? This one already hit take profit three, but you can see it's already on its way back down. Hasn't identified another harmonic pattern, hasn't fallen off of here yet, but you can see it played out. Now, if they had a lot of market activity, a lot of them playing out, then this would no longer be on there. So they start filtering off the page. So the one, so you know, the ones that are on there, that means they're playing out, they're still in play, they're still in action. So that you know, nothing has shifted so dynamically that it's not gonna be on there anymore. Make sense? So up until this point, questions, comments, testimonies, up until this point. Questions, comments, testimonies, great. I'm so glad it does. So yeah, up until this point, questions, comments, testimonies. All right, so I'm gonna keep going. Drop it in the chat. Anytime, if, as we're training tonight, you have a question, comment, and a testimony, drop it in the chat, drop it in the chat, drop it in the chat. All right, so now, this is the GBP. Now, this wasn't um, there earlier. And so, but, you know, what well, was, or I didn't see it earlier. Let me put it like that. Because a lot of these, if I go to the next one, this is what it was still showing. And so you can see as it was closing out to that take profit three, but you guys already know that when I did my take profit three, you know, I had already moved it up. So we hit take profit three. So you understand why we move it and why we shift it. All right. So now if I come back over here, let's analyze this from this perspective. Okay. So now you see that we have this movement up, right? We have this, uh, we marked it up ourselves earlier, you know, this morning. We did it ourselves because we identified where we were in the market. And um, you can see that this was in that continuous downward momentum. And now you see, we even have a new four hour candle here. My stochastic isn't really pushing up just yet, but you can see we're starting to get that, you know, it's done exactly what we, from this morning's call to now, this is doing exactly what we said it was gonna do. Just hasn't really made that move yet. So, but you can see where it's playing out. We even had a trigger for when we start at the top of this call, uh, where we at, or did we? I know we had some. Or is this one on pause? Let me let me see here. I know. Okay, that's GBP AUD, GBP CAD. Maybe I didn't see GBP USD. I know I saw some GBPs. All right. Well, regardless, the other one. Oh wait, there it is. I just saw it. Let me pause it. Pause it. Pause it. Pause it. All right, GBP USD. I know I saw it at the top of the call. I'm like, come on now. Don't don't play mind games with me. All right. So here we go. I'm gonna mark this up. I'm gonna turn it another color. All right, let's turn it another color and maybe not purple. Let's pick orange or something. Try to stay away from orange because of my pivots. So now, as you see, GBP USD, 37482, right? Where the trigger happened. So now look at how they play together. So they play very well together. My harmonic scanner says I'm looking for a buy, right? It says I'm looking for a buy. Now, I can guarantee you when I take things, when you see me market it up the charts, the only thing I have is that take profit one, two, and three. I don't care what they say their entry point is. I don't care what they say their stop loss is, right? And then I even adjust these. You guys see me adjust these. Let me help you. These are, these are Fibonacci levels, okay? Uh, I personally, people use them all the time. I have absolutely nothing against them. I've just never used them. I just, it's just not something I use. Uh, everybody has their own personal preference, own personal trade style, own personal journey. And the Fibonacci's is just not something that I've used. But that's what these are. Okay. Now, when you come back over here, you know, and I'm looking at this, I don't ever want my stop loss on a support and resistance line. Okay. Where does our stop loss go with the PSR? It goes above or below. Even when you're doing just, let's say you were doing naked charts, just straight price action, where would your stop loss go? Above or below that support and resistance line. You never put your stop loss on a support resistance line, never. Um, because it's going to touch the line. It's, it's going to touch it, okay? So I never, ever even pay attention to this stop loss. Now, I also really, if I use this, it's about a take profit or it's because 
I'm just coming over here to show you guys how to mark up those numbers because my market, the market tells me how to do, right? The market tells me when to enter the trade. The BYOB cash out strategy tells me when to enter the trade, not a line, right? So your, you know, your skill set development tells you when to enter that trade. You know, we're not just going to blindly enter a trade because we're at a certain line. And then also, this is a prime example of why you see me, right? Let's go back to this one. This is a prime example of why you see me making those adjustments. Because look at where that take profit three was. This never made it down here. This is why you always see me make those adjustments because I, and I use the line chart for those adjustments. So this is why you always see me do that because you notice it never ever hit, it never moved down here where it was a line, but I'm gonna use the line chart because I want to know, I'm gonna move my take profits up. So if I was over here, there's no way that I'm leaving it right there where it wicked out. You can look and see where your take profit should have been. So I use the line chart and I make those adjustments. And then also I kind of give it a little cushion, you know, because I, I like my take profits to hit. You know, there's no such thing as a, um, you know, you know, um, there's no such thing as um, a, what is it? A definitive line in the market. I've forgotten to unstop the alert button. Uh, give me a little bit more clarity on what you're talking about. So now, as I'm looking at this, okay? So now we know that we had this identified. So I wanna help you with these trades, okay? I wanna help you with these trades. I wanna answer your question. So. Uh, just give me a little bit more clarity um, on that to help me understand what I might have, you know, because I want to make sure. So now, so when I'm here, all right, so you see I'm on an hour. This is ultimately where, it, you know, we're beginning this trade area from up in this little zone right here. So I'm going to just come right here and I'm going to just drop this right here because that's where we were starting out. This one is not analyzed. So maybe I should change the color of it. You know, maybe we'll change the color. So that one's not analyzed. And then as we come down here, right? Come over here. This one is where, you know, we've identified for a buy on the, so that's a harmonic scanner trade that was identified. And, you know, I think I'm not gonna readjust from what we did earlier. I don't wanna take the time to do that. But they're they're a little different than what's on there. Um, they're a little different. I forgot to unstop the alert button on the side. Oh, this oh the press play. So okay. So all right. So now, thank you for that. So now, as you're looking, all right. So you see that this is an SL. So now you have different styles of trading. Okay. First and foremost, this is triggered on the hour, all right? We're triggered on the hour. Where do we actually get into the trade, okay? So if I'm going to trade on the hour, that means that I need everything in alignment, which means I started here, okay? My blue line crossed over the red. I started here, okay? You can see it was not ready. I actually had a red candle with a flat top and a PSR flip right here. But I also need, what do I also need? I also need to check my four hour for confluence. I did not have confluence right here. I didn't have it. My confluence didn't start till here for my four hour. Now, I have that, but can I just jump in this trade? Remember, and look, look what happened on the um, hour. So we're still not ready. So let's come on over and let's try it again. So all of that has to be in alignment, all right? So now we have a red candle, with a flat top and a PSR flip. And then this is what sometimes you guys are like, well, no, look at my stochastic. It's fine, trust me. It's a momentum indicator. You want it to have momentum. So you see that it's in a downward sale. It's in that downward momentum, right? That's what you want it to do, okay? That's exactly what you want it to do, all right? You want it to do that. So now, as I'm here, all right, now I'm here. And can I enter the trade? No, let me check my 15 minute chart. So come on back up here, come back up here. 
Look at my 15 minute chart. So now we're here. So what do I know? This is what I know. I know I can trade to that first support and resistance line that first take profit without any, right? I know that. So that's what happened here. We got down here. That's what I know. So, and ultimately that was, let's see here. That was 75 pips, okay? So that was still a nice trade. That was a beautiful trade actually. So, however, as I'm looking here, right? When was my last significant level? Let's come back up here because this is why I tell you guys to start on the 15th foundation. What was my last significant level? My last significant level was here, right? Last significant level was here. This was that last push up. So that means in order for me to have a trend change, I need to pass this. So I know that I was in, a, I'm in a, so even though this drops down here, I'm still in a bullish market until it passes this point. And so now you're starting to see how all this plays together. Impulse, correction, continuation, correction. So it's going to come out of here, it's going to retest, and then it's going to pull out. And then once I have two touches, now I can draw a trend line. So you see how we went from a naked chart, right? Just straight BYOB cash out, you know, looking at the chart, looking like this. Okay, well, it didn't look like this. It looked more like this. How we're looking at a chart that looks like this, right? Without any of this. So we're looking at a chart that looks like this without anything. And then we end up here. So before I go any further, questions, comments, testimonies. Before I go any further, questions, comments, testimonies. So everybody has it. We're all ready for the month of April. We're all ready to focus. We're all ready to focus. All of you guys are gonna be ready to go to the harmonic scanner, grab some trades and come back and analyze it. So that's what we're all going to be able to do. And we're gonna build those trade accounts, right? So now this is what has to happen, okay? So you can trade this different ways based on your trading style. So based on my trading style, I can do this different ways. I can just let it ride and make sure I secure my profit. Go back on our YouTube channel. Trade to be well, will be cash out in one of those videos. Don't stop at the first two. Keep going. One of those videos, it talks about the trailing stop loss. It's one of the first videos. It talks about the, one, the trailing stop loss, okay? So you want to go and do that. I, I am fully committed to being focused on my success. Yes, yes, yes. Be wild, be wealthy woman. Yes. So now you want to make sure that you see where like okay so you can trade so you can put a trailing stop loss right you can do that but also take into consideration so um you you see that pullback do we need to no we're doing it the opposite it's the opposite way you go from the harmonic scanner you cannot plug in on a harmonic scanner you don't get to determine what trades you're looking at on a harmonic scanner this scans, so each tool operates different. This tool scans the market for harmonic vibrations, right? It scans the market for those harmonic patterns. So I don't get to say, let me put in GBP NZD. Let me look at GBP AU, right? I don't get to do that, right? You just get to look and see, pick randomly pick a broker, a time frame, and see what's available and analyze it from there. That's all you get to do. And you get to bring it back over here and put it on the vibrata where you can type this in. And then of course, what you're seeing is how now these triggers make more sense to you because now you're understanding the big picture. So even we just analyzed this, we saw that this buy was triggered from the, from the harmonic scanner, but now we see triggers from here that are that are bouncing off of these support and resistance lines and they're triggering the same thing that we're analyzing so when you have multiple tools triggering the same thing that's a good sign right that's a really good sign all right so now 
Right, exactly. Extra confirmation. And so now what you're looking at and, and, and what you're doing, all right? So as I'm seeing this, how you say it's a whole lot of sauce. So as I'm seeing this, so now how, what is your trade style? So now I know I'm in here. So this was marked up this morning. And that's why I said I will break this down to help you understand what this is, right? What this is and what's going on. So look at the fact that if I drop down to the 15 minute chart, we know we're down in a downward momentum. We know we're down in a cell. We know that's where we are. But as I look at this, right? Now look, I want to show you something. Now don't miss this. I'll go back to that, give me a minute. So as I look at this, don't miss this. So now here, and look at all this momentum. When did it stop? So if, if I draw this line, I'm in here, right? If I draw this line, I'm in here. So now you see that I'm in this downward momentum, this downward momentum till I got to that support line, this downward momentum. Now, if I drop down to the hour, I have some momentum. So your stochastic is not the same on every time frame. So this is why sometimes when you be like, it's not at the 80, it's not at the 20, but it's not at the 80, but it's not at the 20. And I'm like, as you uh, begin to understand market structure, and as you begin to understand, then it will begin to be clear that you're still in a downward momentum and you're coming out of a correction. And sometimes the corrections don't hit the 80. But until you get there, or the 20, until you get there, right? Until you get there, you stay on your, hey, I'm blue line cross over the red at the 80, blue line cross over the red around the 20. Green candle flat bottom, red candle flat top, piece our flip to the top, piece our flip to the bottom. You stay there as you begin to get clarity from your eyesight. So now when I drop down to the 15, look at the, now remember from here to here, my four hour stochastic is straight down. Can you still see my downward momentum, right? You still see my downward sell. You still see I'm in that cell. You still see my I'm flowing in a cell. However, right? So we're in a bearish market. However, look at all the momentum that's taking place on the 15. On my four hour, it was just straight down. Straight shot, straight red candles, straight shot down. When I get down to my 15, have a whole lot of activity a whole lot of momentum, a whole lot, right? I have a whole lot of that. So as I'm looking at this, right? Now you have multiple entry points. So here we already know, we took this. This was, right, 75. Then it comes back up, blue line cross over the red and the downward momentum. Red candle with a flat top piece are flip. Right, not gonna analyze all of them for the sake of time. We did it earlier, but once again, trade 10 pips and cash out or support a resistance line. Is this not a support and resistance line in here? Absolutely. Then of course, come back over here, right? Blue line cross over the red and the downward momentum. Blue line cross over the red and the downward momentum. Red candle flat top, piece are flip to the top. Do my time frame confluence. So now you know you're trading with the trend and these are your entry points. And then of course, I still need my five minute. On my five minute are those tighter entries. It's still in a cell. So now for clarity's sake, you know that anytime this happens, right? Anytime any of this happens, right? I know there's another one in here somewhere that I want it and I'm probably not gonna find it. I always lose it because I didn't want this big one, but that's okay. So anytime I'm doing this, right? Anytime I'm doing this, what am I doing? I am counter trend trading. I am counter trend trading. So while some of you all will go, oh, I'm in a buy, I'm in a sell, I'm in a sell, I'm in a buy, I'm in a buy, I'm in a sell, right? 777 in the chat, 777 in the chat. Do you know what you're trading? Are you counter trend trading? Or are you trading with the trend, right? Which one are you doing? So it is best to trade with the trend. So it, it, the trend is your friend. And so it's important for you to understand and know what you're trading. And obviously GBP has a nice counter trend trade, right? Because there's a lot of momentum and GBP, 
but you need to know what you're doing because of the fact that what if, how do you know how far it's going to go? Is it going to go 20 pips? Is it going to go 50 pips? Is it going to go 20 pips? Is it going to go 100 pips, right? What is it going to do? You don't know because it's a counter trend trade. So it's a counter trend trade. So can I please repeat what I said about recognizing the trend train? Absolutely. So right here, let me come back to my higher time frame. So right here, right, right here, right here, right here. In order for me to have a true trend change, right? In order for me to have a true trend change, I must pass that last significant level. So you see how that was a push up? You gotta remember impulse, correction, continuation, correction, continuation. So if I can pull back, my correction could have stopped right here and still pull back up. Am I making higher highs, higher highs? Am I making lower, high, lower highs, right? What am I making? Until I break that pattern, I don't have a trend change, right? I don't have one. So, um, so it's like you're looking at the details of the moment movement on the lower time frames, like the 15. But though, absolutely, the overall trend was still bullish until we broke this. Absolutely. So the higher time frame, like even this one is bearish. It's an SL. But you look at this. You see all these little arrows. That's up. That's what we had that momentum flowing up. That's what we had that movement going up. That's what we had that. But guess what? Do you don't see any green on this time frame? So voila, counter trend trade. This has been so helpful. Light bulb moment. Ooh, this training just clicked. Love it, love it, love it. All right, guys. Questions, comments, testimonies. So understand. Let me put this on here for you. Huh? Do I mean you can. You definitely can, especially like if you're doing that um setup, like you definitely, definitely can. I mean, so it's only gonna bring you clarity. So two things I wanna do. I wanna mark this one up for you, but let's get that other confirmation. Let's grab that other confirmation, right? Let's come grab this other confirmation. What do I love? What do I love? Who knows me? What do I love? <laughs> yep. So. Now, I put my pivots on here. So yes, yes, we are technically right now because we have not passed that last, yes, absolutely. You are still technically in a bearish trend, absolutely. You are still technically in a bear. It doesn't matter that we're bouncing off of here until we pass that level. So now let's look at my pivot point. So my pivot point is here, coming over here, my hour, my pivot point is up here, right? So knowing that on my higher time frames, my pivot point is here in the middle. I can jump up here to my R1 or my S1. We're already at the S1. So we're already there. Come down here to my 15. Every last one of my pivot is above me. So even though, what are we doing? We're probably retesting this trend line right here. But even though, look where my pivot line is. So you see that we're trying to get that um, bullish momentum going, but my 15 minute is in that correction. So that's what it is. So now you see, you, this is why I don't like starting the charts out looking like this. If I was to start the training out and the chart look like this, you're like, okay, how do you get there? Why does this look like a coloring book? You know, it looks like my two-year-old scribble scrabbled all over the page, right? So you have to be able to break this down because when you log on, this is what you see. When you log on, this is what you see. And this is why so many of you guys are like, well, just give me a signal. Can you just tell me the entry point? Can you just please tell me what to do? No, I'm not just gonna tell you what to do. We're gonna walk you through this process so you can understand how to do it. You need to know how to trade without me. You have to know how to trade when we're not on this call. You have to know how to take a trade when you're by yourself because you have to know how to utilize the tools when somebody's not there with you. So that's empowerment. Right. You're here for wealth creation, not gas money. So you are the signal. Absolutely. So if we look at this one, GBP NZD is doing the same thing. So let's mark this up so we can transition this call because I want to leave you with these because because I want you to follow them. I want you to allow them to play out. I want you to be able to take the trades. And that's what I want you guys to focus on this month. So what does that mean for you? What, what does that mean? That means that every day this month, you're going to do a minimum of one. That means that every day this month, you are going to do a minimum of one. 
And then just drop it in the chat that you did your trade. Drop it in the chat that you marked up your chart. Drop it in the chat that you identified it. So even if you take the trade or not, if I don't care if it plays out or not, I mean, I do want it to play out for you, but I want you to get that clarity with the market. You know, I want you all to have that clarity and that understanding with the market, right? That's what I want you guys to do. So now, as we're looking at this, okay, and you can see that, look, where would I do? I'm bringing this down. No, I'm doing this. I'm bringing this down. I'm not leaving this up there. We just showed you on GBPUSD on the sale how it might not hit it, right? So you're going to bring that down. And so now these are those take profits, okay? So where do we have to wait? So look at my hour. That's beautiful, right? That's like perfect for a BYB cash up. But remember, we're on an hour, not 15. Let's do my time frame confluence. I don't have it yet. Now, going back to that question, you see how my stochastic is starting to curve up. Look what my 15, look what I mean, look what my candle is doing. So this is probably fluctuating from green to red. So we almost have, we almost have confluence, right? We almost there. Let's check my 15. What's my 15 doing? You probably already took a 777 on this, you know, because we had confluence on the hour and we had confluence, you know, this is so from a 15 minute, I could take a trade. From the 15 minute, I could take this trade from right here. So definitely could have taken that trade but that would have been 10 pips to cash out or to my very first support and resistance slide and then obviously um so what you're waiting for is you know that's oh look we just got a new candle and obviously we're still kind of in this one so now you just have to wait on that entry point because if you were not already in the trade then now you just have to wait and we still don't have a true trend change it'll probably come up to about right here you still don't have that true trend change to what it passes that last significant level, all right? So that's how, why sometimes you'll see it hit there and then it turn around and you'll be like, what happened? Why did that do that? I don't understand. Why did it not keep going? It didn't break that level. It has to break that level to have that trend change. That's why some of you all will just take that to that first one and you're done. And then some of you all will secure your profit, allow it to readjust and then keep going. All right, guys? So that's my time. I wanted to make sure that I got a lot of information in with you all. Um, wanted to make sure that that transpired and that happened because I want you guys focused. When we said that this year, where you are going to transform, when we said this year, you are going to be seven figure earners. You are, you are well on your way to that, okay? And I need you guys to grasp that and understand. And so we're going to pour into you, but I, you got to do your part. So I need you guys committed to dropping it in the chat. I need you guys committed to doing one a day at a minimum. You need to commit to yourself and get focused. And also go visit the store, BYOB Movement Shop. And let's go think like a bank, act like a bank, be your own bank. And of course... We're going to look like a bank, right? We're going to look like a bank. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, it's my time. I'm glad your eyes was open. You guys know we love you. I like shake the bank. Yes, ma'am, shake the bank. So with that being said, it's time to transition this call. So ladies and gentlemen, you guys got to experience him on Tuesday night on BYOB, you know, a talk with the finance doctor, right? Prime time. So it's now time for me to transition this call. I'm going to turn this call over to someone I have a tremendous amount of respect for. This gentleman has a PhD in finance and economics, and he is known as the one and only finance doctor. Dr. Bythewood, are you on the line? Yes, I am absolutely on the line, Miss Tasha M. Dyer, a.k.a. The Trade Whisperer. The M stands for we missed you while you were gone. Glad that you returned in great form. So this is Dr. Craig Bythewood, and this is a talk with the finance doctor, your Rx for Forex. So for the benefit of the 111ers, let's make a very important distinction. Ms. Dyer is an expert at chart-based explanation. Therefore, it is most efficient for you to have your questions and place them in the chat. But this is a talk with the finance doctor, a conversation where we take advantage of the fact 
that personal finance is the only area of our society where the only people that share with you information about personal financial products are the same people who sell you the information. So this is an opportunity for us to dialogue. So change the mindset on this call. This is a conversation. This is, a mon this is not a monologue. This is a, a dialogue. This is a multi-logue. Yes, I made that word up. So please feel free to walk in the power of the unmuted microphone whenever you have a question. Welcome to a talk with the finance doctor. Now, this is part two of Tuesday's conversation, which was be your own bank personified. We spoke about the banking industry and how it's set up. And I loved the way it was set up for me so smoothly by Ms. Smith who said, I'm uncomfortable with that. She actually hit on something I was gonna hit on anyway, because that is our natural reaction. Our natural reaction is to look at things that may not be in our, to our benefit. Our natural reaction is to look at things that may not be to our benefit and then judge and or discuss and or describe and or state that we have an issue with it and we have a problem with it. And what we have to recognize is that that is a proposition that is not value added. There's literally no value in pointing at something and saying, I don't like it. But there is value in noticing what you don't like and then immediately changing your energy to what you want. Here's something I said to a life coaching client recently. We humans spend so much time complaining, commenting, and discussing what we don't like instead of putting our energy and our focus on what we want. It makes a difference. Yeah, Dr. B, but it's true, I know. Yeah, Dr. B, but I'm being realistic, I know. But, the, but it's, it's on you. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what do you want? Do you want the reality of the way things are to continue? Yes, I do. Well, then keep complaining about them. Or do you want to shift your energy you want to meet all of the goals that Ms. Dyer was talking about today. You want to make sure that you have a laser-like focus. The way to do it is to take less attention. Let me say that differently. To put less attention on the results, less attention on what you don't like, less attention on what's happening and put more focus on what you want. So that is the reason why we spend so much time in this movement and on this call, talking about what the Be Your Own Bank movement means, being your own bank is being empowered. Being your own bank is being economically swagalicious. Have you ever walked into a bank and spoke to the bank manager and they lacked confidence when they told you about the rules of the bank? Have you ever dealt with a teller who was telling you what their rules are, what their principles are, who was non-confident about those rules? They know that they are running the ship. They know that they've created the ship in a way where they're going to benefit. And guess what? We're okay with that. What we're going to do is borrow some of those principles and we're going to do the same thing with our household. We're going to make sure that we become our own bank, that we are swagalicious about our economic principles. And what a perfect way to put that in motion than what Ms. Dyer has told us as our theme for the month, and that is focus. That is focus. That is focus. Now, I'm going to do two things about focus before I jump back into banks. First, let me say this. We have to be real about the fact that focus sometimes requires some attention on our part. Focus is something that sometimes allows us to be able to, to we have to, to put some energy into it because that may not be the way in which we've lived up to this point in our lives. So let me give you uh, an important component of focus. One of the most important components of focus is discipline, discipline. So here's my definition of discipline. Give yourself a command and then follow it. Give yourself a command and follow it. Well, let's be real about something. We live in a world where there is so much stimuli. There's so much going on. There's so many things that are vying for our attention. 
you turn on Netflix and you decide you want to watch something, by the time you look at all the choices, you could map out the entire 24 hours and then have another 24 hours tomorrow. And then by the time you finish that, then there's another show. And that's not counting the, the streaming shows on the regular broadcast stations. And that's not counting what's on your TikTok. And that's not what's counting on your Instagram. And that's not what's counting what your kids want you to pay attention to. Hey, can we watch a movie? Can we watch a movie? I'm okay with all of that. What I'm saying is that in order to be disciplined, you really have to put yourself in a perspective of being disciplined enough to be focused. So I'm gonna give you an exercise that I've been giving to clients, which is really, really effective. Sometimes we need to train ourselves to focus. Why, why do we have to do that? I'm sorry, am I the only one that works out? Am I the only one that goes to the gym? Am I the only one that picks up a weight? What are you doing when you pick up a weight? You're developing muscle memory. And you're training your body to be able to do that particular exercise. And the more you do it, the more adept the body becomes at doing it. And when it does it, it causes a growth in the muscle. We're doing the same thing. We have to be focused in our intensity and our energy in making sure that we develop the muscle memory. So here's a tip. Here's a, a, a technique that really works. Find a spot on the wall across from you. In other words, don't go to the wall, but let's say you're, there's a couch right there and then there's a wall on the other side. So find a spot on that wall. Set your timer for two minutes and look at that spot. No matter what happens, bring your attention back to that spot. Now, let me let you know, this is gonna be a little bit more challenging than you think it is. And after you do two minutes, then try three minutes. So your goal is to get up to five minutes. When you can look at a spot on the wall uninterrupted for five minutes, what you're doing is you're developing focus. And then you'll find that when you're doing something that's 30 minutes, when you're watching a market talks recording that's an hour, you'll be in a better position to be focused because of this little exercise. And just do it every day. If five is too much, just do two. But do it every single day. And another way of doing the same technique, if there is no spot on the wall, now first of all, you can just take a pen and draw a little spot on the wall, a pencil, excuse me, or you can do it with the candle. It's actually a little bit more effective with the candle. Light a candle, put it on the other side of the room and focus on the candle. Every time something takes your attention away from the flame, go back to the candle. And you will find that if you do this every day in a short amount of time, your focus will improve. So focus, focus, focus. Now, let me pause and ask if anyone has any questions, comments, or testimonies about these techniques, about these philosophies, about focus. Excellent. So on Tuesday, we talked about the way banks set things up. And we did it so that we could make the point that I've said for almost 30 years, I am not anti-institution, I'm pro-bank. Oh my God, I am not anti-institution, I'm pro-household. So we're just developing an understanding of the way processes work. And when we understand the way processes work, we're in a better position to strengthen ourselves by putting ourselves in an economic position. So quick 30 second recap, I told you what the definition of bank was. I told you how banks have strategically and smoothly got around that based on us and our keeping money in checking accounts. So let's go a little bit deeper on this issue of how banks set things up and how we want to be comfortable, Ms. Smith. We want to be comfortable with what they're doing and then take these, these topics or take this philosophy and then do it our own, do it ourselves. And I know I'm picking on you, Ms. Smith, but literally I was going to address the same situation because that's our go-to. You look at our world. We, are, we live in a world where we're taught to have an issue with something. We're taught to fight something. We're taught to combat something. Look at every TV show, every movie, there's an antagonist and a protagonist. So the protagonist is fighting against the antagonist and at the end, the protagonist mostly wins, not all the time, but bottom line is there's always that pull and pull, that pull and tug. And so we feel like we, we carry this belief that it has to be that way, but it doesn't. We're simply looking at what an industry is doing and we're setting ourselves up to empower ourselves by doing what's best for us. That's all we're doing. And here's the deal. When we do the opposite, 
and we spend too much energy focusing on what they're doing wrong, we literally become subconscious victims to it because that's where our energy is. Our energy is on what they're doing wrong and therefore we continue to experience them doing wrong. I say this on almost every call, vibrations have to match. So if banks are doing something that, that we don't think is cool, we have to be on that vibration in order to say, I don't think what you're doing is cool. But if we take what they're doing and then we raise our vibration to a level of us having a match to our desires, a match to what we want, a match to the focus we want, a match to the transformation we want, a match to the seven figure earning that we want, then we put ourselves in a better position. Let that go. That's irrelevant. It's relevant now because we have to look at it in order to put ourselves where we want to be, but we want to put our energy on what we want. So let me ask you all a, a rhetorical question that I really don't expect you to answer. I'm just asking it for you to think about it. What is the number one trick? What is the number one trick? Don't answer it, I'm just asking rhetorically. What is the number one trick that a drug dealer will use to get a new customer? I changed my mind. Answer that in the chat. What is the number one rule that a drug dealer uses in order to get a new customer? Type the answer in the chat, please. Free samples. I knew there was at least one thug on the call. <laughs> and of course it would be you, Ms. Robinson. That's it. Give them a free sample. Because if you give them a free sample, then they get hooked. And when they get hooked, then they're going to come and they're going to put themselves in a position where they can sell you whatever amount they want. They get you hooked. Very good. Thank you. I appreciate a, a thuggish audience. So that's what drug dealers do. Now, you can tell by my conversation with you last Tuesday or last a talk with the finance doctor, and you can tell by the fact that I studied bank mergers in my dissertation 26 years ago, really 29 years ago, because it was a two year process. And since I've had the opportunity to be a consultant for banks, you know I have some, some understanding of, of how banks operate. So, and I have an understanding of the, the history. In order for me to write my dissertation, I had to go back and really look at the entire history of banks. So that was information, hear me, that at that moment was a little boring, but now it has life because we're in a be your own bank movement. I just said something. Somebody's going through something right now that they think is boring, but you never know how it's going to affect you in the future. So go ahead and learn it. So in my historical underpinnings of addressing the banking industry, here's something that I came in contact with. Banks, when debit cards first came out, when debit cards, actually let's go back, let's go to ATMs. When ATM machines first came out, they were free. So the concept was, hey, we've got these machines and you can come to the machine and you can put your card in and you can get money out. They were free. I'm old enough to remember when they were free. Well, there used to be a time when online banking first was introduced, this is the 80s, when, when online banking was first introduced, it was free. Now, it is free now again, but that's because of some legislation that happened in 1999, but that's not my point. My point is it was free when they first came out with it. Then some of the bigger banks began to charge for online banking, an extra monthly charge. Debit cards, when they first came out, they were free. Now, some of you are saying, well, well, debit cards are still free. Actually, they're not, because there are many banks that charge you a annual fee for your debit card. And there's some banks that actually charge a transaction fee every time you use your debit card. Well, how do I know? You'd have to do something that very few of us do. You'd have to look at your statement. So my point is very simple. Those are three examples of things that banks provided as a courtesy and we got used to it and we got comfortable with it. Then when they started charging us, by that time we were so comfortable with the high, oh, I'm sorry. We were so comfortable with the convenience that we earned 
that now we're willing to pay. So my point to you is very simple. What is the difference between what drug dealers do and what banks have done? Absolutely nothing. This is not anti-bank. This is not even anti-drug dealer. This is just a comparison as to the way in which we sometimes create perceptions based on our labels of certain groups when the concepts may be exactly the same. Now, of course, I'm being facetious because I know the impact of drugs is far greater than the impact of you paying additional fees. All I'm saying is that the concept is the same. So what do we do with this information? We understand that we are about to become seven figure earners. So we need to, I'm sorry, we are already seven figure earners. I am that I am. So given that we are seven figure earners, now the stakes are higher because fees that are going to be charged on this level of money, we need to be a little bit more understanding. We need to be a little bit more exposed. We need to have a little bit more, under, a little bit more exposure to how banks are setting things up. So now that you know that that's their model to give you something for free and then begin to charge you, what about the thing they give you for free in 10 years? What about the thing they give you for free in 15 years? So like I said last talk with the finance doctor, this conversation is less about what banks do. And it's more about how to study infrastructure, how to study the way the processes are so that you can put yourself in the best position. So I just happened to be a little bit different than you in that I was exposed to a whole bunch of articles that you weren't exposed to. Speaking of articles, remember I told you on last talk with the finance doctor that I chose my uh, dissertation chairperson based on how little resistance I would have to deal with in order to graduate, that's strategic. And so in doing so, I began to study banks, setting ourselves up for me being part of the mastermind group with the Be Your Own Bank movement. Part of me being part of all of you rectangles because in order for us to hit 2 million families by March of 2022, we have to do it together. So it was a setup for what we're doing right now. Thank you, God. So in that situation, I remember being in a banking class and there was an article and the article, let me, let me put this in historical perspective. I was in graduate school from 1989 to 1994. Yes, I was 11 when I went. So from 1989 to 1994, I'm in graduate school and we're reading an article somewhere around circa 1990, 1991. And the article says this, banks are moving toward a cashless society. Banks are moving toward a cashless society. Well, I've always been that dude that wanted to understand, that wanted the application, that was less interested in the theoretical formula and more interested in how I can apply it in real life. So I raised my hand and I asked the question, excuse me, Dr. Flannery, can you please explain to me why banks are moving toward a cashless society? And I found his answer to be so interesting. This was an expert in banking who's received numerous academic awards for his outstanding research and publication trainings. He did this, he said, hmm, I don't know, Craig, I, I'm not sure. Now, it wasn't the fact that he didn't know. It was the fact that A, he hadn't even thought about it. And B, by putting yourself in a situation where banks are making a decision, we sometimes just automatically accept that their decisions are for the betterment of the society because of what I explained to you on Tuesday about the way we view banks. Remember, prior to 1933, prior to the Great Depression, banks handled all financial market transactions. The bank was the broker for financial markets. Then after 1933, like I explained to you, we split up into two, investment banks and commercial banks. Now they're the same entity again. So banks have a very important role in our society. Whenever there's a situation with an economic scenario, we always look at the banks. Let me give you a, an example, ripped from the headlines of my experience. So I was a consultant for Chase Manhattan Bank in the year 1998. 
as I explained, I was working for Florida a and University as a professor, and I did a consultantship with Chase Manhattan that summer. So I'm in Manhattan, and I did like a round robin where I would meet with different people in different departments. So there was a particular day that I had a meeting with a, a, a particular gentleman in, uh, I don't remember the name. Yes, I do, Mergers and Acquisitions. He was in Mergers and Acquisitions, and I was supposed to meet with him. So I got there at 12 noon, which was the time of our meeting. His secretary said, I'm sorry, he's been delayed, uh, but he's going to get with you. Now it's 2 o'clock, still being delayed. Now it's 4 o'clock. I literally sat there for four hours. So at the four-hour mark, she came out. She said, listen, I need to apologize. But something really big happened today, and so he's not going to be able to meet with you. So i uh, sorry, I told you what guy I am. I said, well, what had happened? And so she, she pointed out. She said, well... What happened was a bank, a rather large bank, went out of business yesterday. And when a large bank goes out of business, all of the large banks that are still solvent get together and they're forced to bail the bank out. So he wasn't prepared for that based on some budget items that we had. So he and some other executives at the bank are deciding and discussing how they're going to strategically respond to the fact that they've got to find funds to bail out this bank that's failed. Think about what I just said to you. You may have heard the concept of too big to fail, too big to fail. I explained to you on Tuesday that in 1933, we made a decision never to put ourselves in a spot where a bank run could cause the collapse of the economy the way it did in the 19, in 1929. And that's from 1929 until 1933. They just stopped the bleeding with the Glass-Steagall Act. So we started being, or banks started being regulated by the government and they're still regulated to this day. In fact, there are three different regulating agencies that address what banks are doing. So what I'm saying to you is this, think about this. What will the bank say to you? A bank will say, hey, you're cool. We are protecting your account. We're protecting your account with FDIC insurance. What does that stand for? Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, FDIC insurance. So what we're saying to you is this, if there's any issue with your deposits, you're gonna be able to get FDIC insurance. Now, I have never had a conversation with any of you, maybe Gerald Rogers, Gerald D. Rogers, but I've never had a conversation with any of you about FDIC insurance. But how do I know for a fact, for a, I had to stress that T, for a fact, how do I know that none of you have ever received FDIC insurance, nor do any of you know anybody that's received FDIC insurance? You don't even have to answer me because I know I'm right. You don't know anybody that's ever received FDIC insurance because they say that there's insurance. Now there is insurance, I'm not saying that they're lying, but they say there's insurance to make you feel good. But here's what the government recognizes. Here's what the banking industry recognizes. Here's what the regulators recognize. If there's a problem with your deposits and you're paid FDIC insurance, that's going to affect your psyche. That's going to affect the way you view the bank. And you're going to feel some type of way, not that you got the FDIC insurance, but that you had to get the FDIC insurance. Therefore, banks do not pay FDIC insurance. Instead, they do what happened that day that made me sit there from 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock. It was okay. They had really great snacks in that department. So it was a really great day for me to chill for four hours and eat those snacks. But the bottom line is they get together and they have to pay to bail the bank out rather than have FDIC insurance sending the message that there's anything wrong with the banking industry. I am not anti-bank, I'm pro-institution. If that's the way they wanna run their business, fine. All I'm saying is they're telling you that you're FDIC insurance insured, but it means nothing. It means nothing. Isn't this all the more reason for us to want to be our own bank? Isn't this all the more reason for us to want to be our own bank? Because what we're seeing is that there's some thuggalicious activities going on by banks. And behind the scenes, they're telling us one thing, but they're doing something else. That's okay. 
What we want to do is control our own infrastructure. Because remember what I said, you've never been to the bank, spoken to a bank manager, and they had any lack of confidence about what they're going to tell you, you have to do. We have to be that way about our finances. We have to be that way about our, our economic future. We, the same way a bank will tell you, you're gonna to have to wait three to five days. The same way a bank will tell you, well, those funds are not available yet. The same way a brokerage house will say, oh, we got your deposit, but it'll be in two or three days. The same way they can say that to you, we can say to ourselves, let's have focus. Let's transform. Let's be disciplined enough to give ourselves a command and follow it. Let's spend two minutes a day focusing on that candle flame. Two minutes a day focusing on that spot on the wall so we can develop the type of muscle memory that will make us be more disciplined. Because if we're disciplined, then we learn this skill set better. We take advantage of the tools. We put ourselves in a position of strength because some of you, under the sound of my voice, you've committed. You've decided to do this, but you haven't yet taken steps to get disciplined. You know I'm right. You don't have to say I'm right, but I know that I am. So this is a wake up call for us to be focused, for us to put ourselves in a position where we can be our own bank, where we can be fierce, focused, and committed in action. I just made that up. So questions, comments, testimonies from a talk with the finance doctor. Questions, comments, testimonies on a talk with the finance doctor. I will not allow this call to end without thanking you for another rung higher on the glory ladder. This is so phenomenal and I'm so grateful. And I want you to know that my team is in the process of changing, no longer allowing the bank to keep our money in checking accounts, but we're transferring to savings accounts immediately. Love it. Love Thank it. you so much, doctor. Love it, Ms. Brown. We have to take these principles and we have to actionize them. And that's one of the things I love about this movement is all three of the leaders and all of the, the uh, we're all leaders, but all of you always are in a mindset of taking action. And, and I love it. That is what it's about. That's one of the reasons why this partner and accountability is so beautiful. Because oftentimes when we're sitting by ourselves, we won't take the same action that we will when we know that we're going to be made accountable. We're going to talk to someone multiple times a week. And Ms. Dyer is going to say, did you do your homework? So that kind of energy just really puts us in a position of strength. So thank you for, for saying that, Ms. Brownlee. I really, really appreciate that. Any oh, other no, I'm, yes. going, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> going to light my candle tonight. I'm not going to wait until tomorrow. Thank Love you. It. Love it. And I'm telling you, that technique is very effective. Thank you for that, Ms. Brownlee. Thank you. Questions, comments, testimonies on a talk with the finance doctor. Hey, Dr. B, I just, have, just wanted to say thank you to all you guys. Your, your trainings and your education and just the knowledge that you guys are giving has really transformed and changed me a lot. And I found my spot on the wall, and I'm not a thug. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Transfer of knowledge gives me goosebumps, y'all. That's why, that's why I wake up in the morning. That's beautiful. Questions, comments, testimonies. Okay, this has been a talk with the finance doctor. Many things have been said this entire evening on Market Talks and this call that we can use to refocus ourselves and put ourselves in a position of strength. So let's absolutely go out and make it happen. Today is Thursday. This will be the last call of the week. Let's spend the weekend really developing our skill set and getting ourselves ready and confident so we'll hit the ground running on Monday morning. One more time, questions, comments, testimonies. Okay, either one of my business partners have any closing comments? Dr. B, Dr. B. So really my closing comments are to everyone. You all have received some information tonight that is really going to shift your focus and you need to get focused on yourself. You need to make sure 
that what you see, what you desire, what you want to transpire manifest within your life. You need to be able to see that. You need to be able to touch it. You need to be able to envision it with clarity. And if you can do that, then the rest of this is nothing. You can walk through this with grace, with ease, with elegance and excellence. And that's what you're going to be able to do. So we're going to focus this month. We're going to be intentional about what we're doing. So do your homework, right? <laughs> do your homework. So, so make sure you do your homework and come back and listen, really listen to the words that Dr. B has shared with you this evening. So you have homework and you have some commitment. You have to focus, right? And we're going to do everything in excellence. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for that, Ms. Dyer. So let me close this call and this week in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to break bread from a spiritual, emotional, mental, intellectual, and skill set perspective. Thank you for this movement. Thank you for the leaders. Thank you for every single rectangle and the families that they represent. Thank you for allowing us to focus and refocus. Thank you for allowing us to transform. We know in order to be it, we have to see it. And so thank you for all of these reminders that we will absolutely actionize. Heavenly Father, we are thankful. We are appreciative and we are grateful. Amen. Thank you, everybody. And this will officially end this. Amen. Good night.